Creating graphics for a small business can be a daunting task unless you have a plan and a goal. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a template for a brochure. By using a template, you can greatly reduce the design time and allow you to ensure consistency from one project to the next. This brochure, also called a feature sheet, can be used for a real estate agent when listing properties. This type of document is usually a single-sided or double-sided document that is 8.5 by 11 inches. Here it will take on the form of a two-fold brochure. After launching CorelDRAW, create a new document from the CorelDRAW defaults and have the letter size page set to landscape. Set the primary color mode to RGB and leave the rendering resolution set to 300 dpi, then click OK. Start by clicking the intersecting point where the rulers meet in the upper left hand corner and drag out to the upper left hand corner of your document. This will reset the 00, zero coordinates to the top left corner. Next, double click on one of the rulers to open up the options dialog box. Expand guidelines and select horizontal. Here we can precisely place two guidelines, one at minus 0.5 inches and another at minus 8 inches. Next, select the vertical option and here we're going to be adding five guidelines. One at 0.5 inches, one at 5 inches, one at 5.5, one at 6 inches, and the final one is at 10.5 inches. This will effectively place guidelines on our page to allow us to accurately position the items that we require. Start by entering the address for the property. With the text tool selected, type in the address. and the price for the unit. Format this text. I'm going to change it to Bodoni 18 point center justify and I'm going to make it red. I'll now move this text into position. Next what we're going to do is create a couple of rectangles that can be used for power clip frames and a text frame. But before I do, I want to turn on my alignment guides. From my view menu, go down to alignment guides. Now alignment guides allow me to easily position objects on the page and ensure that they're properly aligned with adjacent objects. From the view menu, go down to setup. I'm going to select alignment guide setup. This is a little bit of a tip here. If I change the color from the pale blue to a darker color, it'd be a lot easier to see these guides as I'm moving around the screen. So let's start with our rectangles. I'll click on the rectangle tool and then click and drag on my page to create the first rectangle. I want to ensure that this is 4.5 inches by 3 inches. and position this into place. Now I'm going to duplicate this rectangle and I'll move it to what will become the back panel for this brochure. I'll take this rectangle, duplicate it once more and with the duplicate I'm going to make this 1.5 inches in height and position it below the first one. You'll notice my alignment guides appear so I know that I'm properly aligned with the one on the back as well as the center. I'll duplicate this rectangle one final time. I'm going to resize this one to 2 inches by 1.5. And I'll move this to the back panel upper left hand corner. New to CorelDRAW X6 is a layout toolbar. Right click anywhere on a blank space on the toolbar and select layout. Layout toolbar allows me to convert objects to specialized frames. For example, clicking on this will allow me to convert this rectangle to a power clip frame. So I'm going to create a couple of power clip frames out of these elements. And this final one is going to be a text frame. I'll click on my text frame icon and now if I right click on the text frame itself I now have the ability to insert placeholder text. This will give me a visualization as to what this document is going to look like. I'm going to go to my import 
and I'm going to bring in a business card that I can position on my document. Cancel. And now by ungrouping this, I can place the elements on the page where I want them to be. Now that I have the front of the panel completed, I'm going to work on the back panel. First, what I want to do is I'm going to add some effects to this particular power clip. I want to add a drop shadow, and I'll use a small glow preset. You won't notice the drop shadow here until I actually power clip into this. I'm going to take this element, I'll drag it, and tap my space bar to make a copy of it in this location. And I can move around the screen adding copies where I want them. And there's my final one. And finally, to complete the back of this, I'll need one more piece of text. And one nice feature about CorelDRAW, of course, is its spell check. I'll format this text. make it the same formatting as I have on the front of my document and once I'm finished with the formatting it's simply a matter of moving it into position. Again, have it perfectly centered. So using a few simple tools it's very easy to create an attractive template. I'm going to go ahead and work on the inside of the template and then we'll take a look at how we save this out. Now that our template is complete it's simply a matter of going to the File menu and selecting Save as Template. In the Save as Template dialog box, I'm going to type a name. And click Save. Because I am saving a template, I am now presented with the template properties. This information will allow me to sort and find templates later on. It's a double-sided, two-fold, and I can select the template categories as well. I'm going to uh, call this one, we'll go Other and Real Estate. Services, and in the designer notes I can put information about the template. Here, for example, I've uh, copied some information from a notepad document that gives me information about the actual template itself. And I'll click OK to this. Now when it comes time to use this template, it's simply a matter of going to the File menu, select New from Template, and I can click on My Templates, and here I have the template that I've just created. Notice of my designer notes. I'll click Open, and now I can very easily go and populate the fields within this template. I'll bring the images in that I want to put into these containers and you can see how quick and easy it is now once I've got this built to actually bring my images in and place them where I want them. I'll click cancel on this and now it's just a matter of positioning the images using my power clip drop down menus. And of course the block of text gives me a description of the property itself. And there you have it. Very quickly, very easily we've created a template and much quicker than that we've actually populated the template so now we can go ahead and show our property.